Welcome to Vibe In with Ashley Live. I'm your host, Ashley Live. This is episode 222 of my show, and I'm so very excited to welcome back my next guest to the show. This will be the third time he's been on the show. He was on episode 37 and episode 133. The incredible Grammy-nominated musician, Matt Cusan. So he's a singer, songwriter, and pianist who continues to captivate his audiences across the globe. A Berkeley College alum, Matt's 2009 debut album received rave reviews and won countless awards. He's collaborated with artists like Stevie Wonder, James Taylor, Christina Aguilera, and countless others. On February 2nd, he dropped his latest soul-infused single, First Me. Matt's in the house, and we're going to get this interview started. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ashley, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me again. Of course, of course. And it only makes sense to keep bringing you back on the show because you have so much going on. Like, this is the third time, but I feel like every time I talk to you, you still have so much going on. Always trying to grow. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure I spelled my name right. And, you did. And the Grammy nominated. Nominated was a tricky word. Got it's it. It's okay. You are, <laughs> you are good to go. And uh, yeah, how's your <clears throat> night going so far? Good. I'm a little, there, there will be interruptions. A three-year-old will run in the room because okay. when she's supposed to be sleeping, she likes to come in and say, what's something funny that I can bring to mommy? So, hey, no worries. I'm it. all about comedy here. So Great. she needs to come in. And she's been on the show before. Yes, um, and she was a tiny. I believe, yeah, I don't know if that was 2020 or 2021, but I remember we were like full in the pandemic mm -hmm. and she made... An appearance on the show so she's more than welcome to come, to come on <laughs> good good she will uh yeah 2020 she would have been a tiny newborn and mm -hmm. then 2021 she would have been one so whatever uh whatever she was at the moment somewhere in that time frame because i think when you think of the pandemic i mean i know when i look back on it it's like a whirlwind of emotions and like a blur what the heck was yeah. that it's still i still don't understand the whole <laughs> it's just it's so wild and to go through it with a newborn is nuts that's a whole different level of craziness because you're trying to navigate this world and you're like yeah but i have another human that i need to take care of and make sure she's amazing and she's safe. yeah all these things and not knowing what this disease is that is you know doing horrible things to the entire world i yeah. we were extra you know psycho about protecting her and keeping her inside and it wasn't a fun time it was a beautiful time because we had her but but it, we we didn't do anything yeah, but I think that's good because in a way your life paused when mm -hmm. normally you would be on tour, right? Because you tour so much, you're doing all these projects and all that had to become virtual because we couldn't really even be in the same room with someone. It, it was nice to be there for everything during the pregnancy, during the first mm -hmm. year, two yeah. of her life. It was pretty awesome to be there for literally every little thing. And the second that things started lightening up, I missed her first steps. Uh -huh. I missed her for like, so I missed as soon as that. So I can't imagine what I would have missed yeah. if, if, you know, i not, not that I'm thankful for the pandemic. Nobody is, but being right. home was, was pretty, was pretty awesome. Yeah. Blessing yeah. in disguise. Definitely. So I want to talk about the latest single first me. This sure. is a very deep, vulnerable song. And I want to break down some of these lyrics. Okay. Sure. I need some relief, a moment of peace because I'm not as strong as you want me to be. I know how to fall, but I'm learning to fly. I know when I'm down to keep my head high. Yeah, so that is a, uh, it, the, the business sends you through loops, mm -hmm. uh, ups and downs. The business uh, has um, definitely tarnished me in a lot of ways especially when I was younger and and even less strong I was never a strong person I'm a softy a total softy mm -hmm. and to my detriment because I've uh you know I suffer from severe like we're going we're getting right into the deep stuff why not uh, let's yeah, just do it yeah going right into it so I I have I, I I'm definitely a uh I, I suffer from de uh, massive depression uh, anxiety, especially in social situations, which is makes performing tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, that is 
<clears throat> that lyric came from it, from a lot of things. One from learning how to deal with all of that and mm -hmm. talk about it, which we're doing now. And I'm learning the more I talk about it, the, the more it helps me and the people that I'm talking to or the people that are listening um, to, to realize that we're not alone. We're far from alone. And I think everybody de is dealing, deals with something, everybody. And uh, it also was a, a, rea a realization of I can, I, I kind of create my own destiny and I can't depend on the people in the, in the companies and the music business that I've depended on in the past. And that mm -hmm. if I wanted to have a career, I kind of have to do it myself. I have to figure it out on my own. And I think that's how the music business is now. Yeah. Um, you're, you're forced to do things on your own. You're forced to f learn things that you wouldn't have had to learn 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what all of that means. I'm learning, but I still got a long, 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 long way to go. I think the second verse says I've traveled these back roads for so long, but I still got so long to go something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot. Unfortunately, when you ask me these questions about this song, there's so much that goes into every lyric. Because yeah. when I was writing it, it took me about, I know, lyrically, I mean, I wrote the song fairly quickly. I had, I wrote it on guitar and, I, and the guitar part that you hear in the intro, I wrote years ago and I finally turned it into that. And the lyrics took, took me a bit, took me, you know, six months or so to, to finish all those lyrics. Yeah. And every lyric that I wrote, I was dealing with something else or something else was happening at the time. So it's hard to pinpoint one thing for, for especially those lyrics because they are fairly general, but very real. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but that's, it's, it has to do with me uh, and, and all the mental and, and, you know, self problems that I've been dealing with and also me as a musician and all the things that the music business has put me through and now realizing this is where I'm at now. Yeah. And thank you for being so honest with me about this song, right? Because when I listened to this song, I was like, this is, this is deep. Like there's layers to this, right? Oh yeah. I think it helps when we hear people in the music industry talk about those struggles, depression, anxiety, getting burned mm. by other people, right? Absolutely. Like we, we want to like think everyone has good intentions, mm -hmm. but sometimes we get burned really hard. And then you're like, oh, well, now I can <clears> myself when like, I would really just love to pass this on to like that guy over there, but he's a dick. You know, exactly. Exactly. So we can curse. Good. I was wondering if we could curse on this. Yeah. This, I mean, uh, you can say what you, whatever you want. Like, honestly, good. this is your show. But like, I, I always I always worry about the filters because I even I if, even when I'm filtered, I slip. So good. You started you are, that. So you are fault. totally fine. And I think it's important to have these conversations about mental health and about the realities Agreed. of it. Right. Because mm -hmm. like a lot of people see, I think when you go on social media, you see the highs, right? You see like the Grammy now. That's all you see, you yeah. See, you only see the good stuff. We yep. don't highlight the bad stuff, but I think it's important when we talk about it. Cause like you said, when I talk <clears> about it, like it's, you feel a little bit better. And then someone reaches out to you and says, Matt, I'm going through something too. All the time, every day. I, I, <laughs> we, I, I, I try to reach out to this one person a day. Um, mm -hmm. Just, just to have the conversation, just to see how people are doing because well, this is a weird time to be alive, man. It's a lovely time and it's a weird yeah. time. So it's it's nice, especially to be alive and be in a music business that doesn't pay you what they used to and doesn't treat you the way they should. And you can't go on any one of my videos and not see bullies, you know. So yeah. it's it's a it's it's a weird it's a weird time, but I feel like we're all in this together. So. If we if we push each other, I'm actually working on a song right now called that I'm writing with my friend Camila Marshall, incredible singer songwriter, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, it's called Keep on the Rise, and it's just about pushing forward and and carrying each other's light and moving it forward. And I don't mean to get corny, but I think it's needed. I think it's it's necessary at this point. Yeah. I think we need to hear it from <clears> all <throat> people. I think the more we talk about it, it's more normalized, and people are like, yeah. oh. But that person went through it. I didn't know. And sometimes even your friends, when you get deep with your friends, you're like, oh, I never knew that about my friend. But I'm so happy we had this this issue and yep. we were able to talk about it so openly. Thousand percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 like I said, daily, I'm talking to somebody that's going through something. And if they're not mm -hmm. listening to me, they're, I'm listening to them. And we're just kind of, we're here. If, if nothing else, we're hearing each other. 
and we're, yeah. we're, we're here, you know, we're, we're an ear and a shoulder when, when mm-hmm. needed. Mm-hmm. So I guess going back to mental health and the struggles that you've been through, what advice do you have for people? Like, how do you get through some of these rough times? That's a great question. It's different. I think it's different for everybody. I, uh, you know, a little while back, I did it the cowardly way with, with alcohol and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And that still helps, which I don't, I hate saying, but it not helps. That's a terrible word for, for that. But you know what I mean? It still gets yeah. me through a night, mm-hmm. which is not what I want to do, you know? Uh, so I'm learning to, first of all, my daughter and my wife saved me. They're, they're my everything. And, mm-hmm. and, and if I'm having a day, I just got to see that little girl. Hopefully she actually wanted to run in at some point. She may be, maybe too late, but she, she and my wife brighten everything up. They make everything. It's the reason why. You know, they give you a reason to live and to breathe. Of course. Um, I, like I said, for me talking about it, it's is, is helped me. It's just knowing you're not alone. Yeah. Knowing that people, there's so many people that are way worse off than, than, I, than I am. And <laughs> through music, you know, I'm writing these songs like First Me, like Keep on the Rise. Like uh, I have a new single coming out in a couple of weeks called Why Don't We Go. It's just about escaping. It's just about getting away, whether mentally or physically. Mm-hmm. And and I'm finding that if you go even to my last album, um, oh, I hear Pitter Patters. <laughs> no, she's in the living room. Uh, uh, if uh, yeah, if you go back to my last album, there's tons of songs about all of this this subject, uh, especially a song called "Who Like Me," which is uh, which which I implore people to check out because uh, lyrically, I'm I'm very proud of that one. And I wrote that while I was in a mental home. Uh, dealing with, you know, uh, all of this and more. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, there she is. <laughs> I knew she was coming. I knew she was coming. Hi. Hi, you want to say hi? She can't Hello. hear you. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi, we're having an interview. Do you know what an interview is? Um, no. She's asking <laughs> me a bunch of questions, and we're talking, and it's really fun. You're supposed to be... Snuggling with mommy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to just give a wave to everybody and grab something funny for mommy? Yeah. Okay, say bye. Bye. <laughs> I Thank love you, you for joining us. <laughs> hey, okay, baby. What do you want to bring mommy? You want to bring mommy something funny? Yeah. How about this hedgehog? This is what we do every single night. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> That's funny. Can you shut the door? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> See, and look at the smile on my face. That, I, I mean, know. that was actually, it was terrible timing, but it ended up being like kind of what I was speaking of. It was the perfect timing, I think. Yes. So, yes, uh, talking about it, friends, family, um, therapy, all mm-hmm. that, um, uh, and music and writing it out and not being afraid to. Uh, you know, I'm not the person that's going to post about it. Maybe someday I'll get there, but yeah. I don't want the... Oh, you know where it is, baby? The foam roller is under, it's on her side of the bed under the uh, table. Perfect timing. (laughs) (laughs) That's it, baby. And can you shut the door again? I love you. Sleep well, Bubba. She's laughing. She's like, I got these guys. She's at that age now where, where, yeah, where she's a little mischievous and she's a little, she gets a kick out of it. Anyways, all of that helps. And it's different for everybody. And I yeah, it, w- w- whatever helps people get through that it doesn't do, do the harm that you know the substances do. I think uh, I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, and thank you. I don't know if I answered that question. I got no. I think it's <laughs> but I think it's important that you answered it honestly, right? Because even when you said, "Hey, drinking," I don't like to admit it, but guess what? There's other people watching this and that are going to watch this and that feel the same way. That like, oh, yeah. hey, I just need a drink. Like, I need something to just kind of take the edge off. Yeah, I can't do it myself tonight. And 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 again, that's that's very cowardly of me to say. It. And I'm 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 fine with admitting that. And I don't yeah. drink like I used to. I was really bad during my last that whole Only Human album. I have a song called Another Drink, which is just about give me another drink. Yeah. Uh, and it probably now that I'm thinking of it, I cry for help as it is a fun drinking song. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, uh, yeah, I I. I don't, I, I, I will get to the day where I don't need that anymore and I'll know how to do it. And I, like I said, it's, it's, I'm not, 
I'm not even close. I haven't had hard liquor in five years or so. Mm -hmm. So I'm not that way anymore. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move past that phase where I need the glass of wine. You know, I, I, it's been a while even since I've done that, but it'd be nice to, uh, to be able to do it in myself instead of having that. Yeah. 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 Day by day, right? Day by day, one step at a time. I'm better than I was, you know, a year ago. So you just keep of improving. Course. Move it in a forward direction. So let's talk about the music video for this. Talk to mm -hmm. me about that and what was the vision in your head? What were you trying to portray with this? So that vision was all um, George and Ian Cox from Outpost. They are phenomenal uh, mm -hmm. videographer, directors, brains, uh, create creatives. They, they are uh, out here in Western Massachusetts. With me. They do a ton of national stuff. And... Mm -hmm. They really connected with that song, and the at first it was okay. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, there's a there's a fire pit, and you're gonna burn things from your past. You're gonna the the thing that people wanted you to be. You know, part of that song is everybody was like, "You're the next Justin Timberlake. You're the next this and that." Yeah. So it was uh, it was being the first me and not the next somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it's getting rid of the alcohol. I'm blowing up the alcohol in the fire um, by the end of the video. But then they came up with this amazing idea. There was this incredible trans boy who heard the song and got together with Outpost and said, you know, I relate to this song completely differently because my entire life I was told to be something else. And here I am now. So he is an amazing part of the video. So mm -hmm. it's really an awesome, um, you know, just, just juxtaposition of my life and his. And the great thing about the tune is, I've been getting email after email about how, how people are relating to it. And it's different every single time, which is the reason why you write the song. Hey, baby, <laughs> you got to go to bed, pup. You got to go to bed. She really wants to be seen again. She's a little star. You got to go to bed, baby. <laughs> Can I finish my interview? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're you, you going to go snuggle now? Okay. I love you. And then don't forget to shut the door, okay? <laughs> She'd sit on my lap the whole time if she could. I know. I, I, I have a feeling she I love would you. start talking as well. <laughs> she would answer all the questions. I wouldn't have to say a word. Of course. <laughs> um, so I told you that was going to happen. It's going to happen probably again. Um, yeah. So, yes. So that's the beauty of that video is it kind of gives two, two sides of the lyrics of that song and why it was written and all that. And uh I was pretty touched that that the boy wanted to do the video and yeah. and he was awesome. He was so good in it. Yeah, it's very powerful with the fire and like just mm -hmm. the, like the Sharpie on the pictures and yep. like going through the photo album. It's really, really, really powerful. And I love watching a music video because you write it one way. But then mm -hmm. when you're like, this is what I want the visual to be and this is what right. I want people to get from it. Like it's it's so awesome. Yeah, I'm not somebody that, you know, if you go to my Instagram, there's not a million videos of me. I, I've, I've never been somebody that enjoyed my face on screen. Yeah. And uh, so I just followed Outpost's direction and they created a gem of a video, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Guys, if you haven't seen the video, please go check out First Me on YouTube after this interview. So let's talk about having a busy schedule. I know you're balancing like touring and studio work and creative projects and family. So talk to me about how you balance all that. It's, it's, it can get really stressful, to be honest. Uh, as you can see, you can't do anything, you know, without a little girl running, which is the best. It's the best, yeah. you know, I wouldn't change it, change it. But, uh, you know, before she was born, it was a lot easier to balance it. I used to work 12, 14 hours a day mm -hmm. uh, and then leave for a month to go on tour. Now it's, oh, I'm going to try to get all the studio work again because I love being home. Yeah. And I'm a little more choosy with who I go on the road with. Um, and uh, yeah, it's hard. I tell people I'm, I'm, I'm a little slower than I used to be mm -hmm. because my wife also works a ton. And until she goes to pre-K next year, it's all mm -hmm. us. We, didn't, we never did daycare or anything like that because we didn't really need to. One of us was always home. Yeah. So we kind of split the time. Mm -hmm. So when you think of me working 12, 14 hours a day, that sounds ambitious and everything, but I was kind of, I'd imagine at points it was unhealthy yeah. um, just, just for my well being. So it's kind of, I, I, the balance is, is healthy. I wish I had a couple more hours a day to work. 
But the balance is healthy as far as family time, laughing time, because all I do is laugh when I'm with her, mm-hmm. you know, work time. And, and again, I can be kind of choosy of what projects I, I take on, what tours I go on. Um, it's not easy. I don't do much else. Yeah. You know, my, my only me time is right before bed when I'm, you know, hanging out on my phone or with my wife and, and uh, just talking or, you know, I'm a, I'm a diehard basketball fan. So sometimes I will, I will shut the computer off and put the phone on the other side of the room and just watch basketball. And it makes me very happy. I know that sounds really strange, <laughs> but it's a passion. It's my second home basketball. Yeah. I feel at home watching it or, mm-hmm. or playing it. Yeah. And I think it's important to have those creative outlets. And when you do have a down moment, right. And you're just like, mm-hmm. Oh, I have like 20 minutes. What can I do right now? And if that's yeah. the thing and it makes you happy and you're like, it, it is, it is. Cause usually I'm, I'm, Oh, I got that 20 minutes. Okay. I have to do, I have to email this person back. I totally forgot. I have to yeah. fill out this W nine for this company or something, but it's, it's actually, I've, I'm trying to train myself through my therapist's, you know, advice uh, and my doctor. She was like, you need to find ways to de-stress. De- so yeah. I'm trying to do, I, I got to get way better at it. I used to take long, 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 long walks before mm-hmm. uh, Lila was born. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's hard to do now. And I love, we actually take walks together all the time, which I love. Yeah. But, but sitting and watching basketball and, and I'm trying to find ways to just, bring it down, bring the, bring the, bring the mind down a little bit. It's hard, but uh, it's another thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I think even though like, and I love that you take walks, I think walks, people need to prioritize walks more. Like I know everything, everything. like seriously, all you need to do is Mm -hmm. put your sneakers on and then just go outside and be like, "Uh, I'm going to do it for 10 minutes. And then you just like, you feel like energized and you're like, I know when I go for a walk, I like have Mm -hmm. the craziest ideas. I'm like, I wouldn't have got that if I was at home. So uh, the lyric that began first me, that whole chorus, I wrote during a walk. Amazing. And I didn't have my phone with me. So I was like trying to memorize it. I was like, don't forget this lyric. It's a great lyric. Um, yeah. Thankfully, we live outside of this beautiful babbling river mm-hmm. um, in our back, uh, backyard. And I, it's just nice to walk in the area, to go hiking around. The, 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 it's, yeah, all that stuff is super healthy. And, and it's, it's so awesome for me when I get a chance to do it, I'm going to prioritize it more as the weather gets warmer for sure. Yeah, definitely. And even if you say like five minutes a day, cause like we all have five minutes a day, right? So like yes. five minutes, easy. And then just, just go outside and listen to the river. Just, yes. yeah. Oh, just I want a river minutes. in my backyard. That sounds amazing. Come hang out. You're very close. You come hang out. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you. It's lovely. We got a little fire pit in a, in a there's a, it's an apartment building. It's not just ours, but yeah, it's uh it's beautiful out there. Yeah. Also, meditation. I don't know if you're into meditation, but meditation is just like next level. I have tried so hard. I want to be good at it. Yeah. And they say you don't have to be good at it. Like they, they everybody keeps telling me, no, you're allowed to think about work. Right? Like it's going to happen. I have tried so many different apps, so many different classes. Mm. I'm really the opposite of good at it. Whatever the opposite of good, I'm just <laughs> awful. And it's yeah. to the point where it almost stressed me out. But mm-hmm. that's another thing that I'm, I'm, I'm really, 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 I've got, I've got like a whole page of apps, Calm yeah. and, and, the, and the one with the, the, the dude from Europe, I forget the, all the names, but I have all of them and I'm just really yeah. bad at it. And I'm, and I'm, that's one of the things that I'm really trying to. Yeah. I'm going to put you on something, brain the, the Calm app. So do you know who Jay Shetty is? Mm-mm. Okay, so Jay Shetty is like this amazing, he's on Calm, and he does something called Daily J, and I do Daily J meditations every morning. It only takes seven minutes, and I actually, I do it as soon as I wake up. I'm like, I'm in bed when I do it, and then like, I get out of bed, and I just start my day. So I like, am in bed doing my meditation. That's amazing. I just wrote it down. I'm going to check it out tonight. Yeah, because I just like, I'm telling you, I love him. I don't have to be completely silent. He mm-hmm. just talks to me and the things he says, like, can relate to my daily life. They can relate to everybody's life. It's not like, yeah. it's not too crazy. It's just like very chill. And you're like, yeah, he makes you think of certain situations. And you're like, yep, I can apply that to my life. And it's yeah. amazing. I have a dear friend, Arnold McCuller, who is one of the, the other best singer songwriters. He's, he's a little, uh, he's toured with James Taylor and Bonnie Raitt his whole life. And Phil yeah. Collins and I, everybody. Uh-huh. He sends me. 
uh, certain uh, people on com and I check them out all the time and I listen to them yeah. and they're wonderful. I just got to get more repetitive with it and, and just better at, you know, that they say, listen to your breathe. I got to get better at the breathing thing, all that stuff. The breathing. Actually, there's something on calm where the, yeah. it's breathing. It actually shows you like a little circle and it says breathe in and then it says breathe See, out. I'm writing all this down. The, the, you didn't I, know this was going to be a therapy session. I did not know either. I did not know yeah. we were going to talk about calm and meditation, but we could definitely talk that, about that much later because I feel like there's yeah. so much more to cover. <laughs> yeah, all good. I'm following your lead. <laughs> so let's talk about this new song that you're dropping with Jessica Carbo. You just announced, and mm -hmm. it's going to be released at the end of the month. So mm -hmm. tell us about this project. Jess is one of my favorite people to work with. Jessica Carvo has a voice that makes me feel like everything is okay. Yeah. Only a few voices that do that. James Taylor, Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway, Jess Carvo is one of them. When I hear her sing, I'm just like, I, I kind of melt. Yeah. And we used to get together a lot when I lived closer to the city and, uh, and just come up with 10 ideas, eight, five to 10 ideas. Mm -hmm. And I would just start playing chords and she would sing and it was like the best idea you've ever heard. Like every idea, every melody yeah. she comes up with is phenomenal. And then yeah. lyrically, she's just on another level. Uh -huh. uh, so that was one that just stuck with us over mm -hmm. the last year or two. And I, I spent, you know, I really slow at producing that track with her. She played some of the synth stuff and, and she has just the awesomest ideas. And I spent a long time because I had, you know, I was, it was, I did it as an in-between thing. Like when I had a day where it was kind of light, I was like, let me work on this song a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it just turned into this beautiful, airy, floaty, you know, synth-filled, guitar-filled track. And she yeah. wrote the lyrics to that. And I remember it was not too, too long ago. I was like, Jess, this song is amazing. We got to finish this song and just release it. Yeah. So it'll be on my next record and it'll be out the 26th. It's just about, it's an escape that I hope people get, you know, carried away in. And uh, it's, she's, she's awesome. And I think our voices blend pretty well together. And yeah, anything I, I put out a song with her uh, two Christmases ago, we did a, a rendition of Paul McCartney's wonderful Christmas time. And it's one of the fav my favorite things that I've done. Yeah. Uh, so check out everything Jess Car Jessica Carvo and especially you know, the couple ones that I did with her. Yeah. Awesome. And we're looking, we're looking forward to hearing the new song. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm psyched. I'm going to, you know, I, I put a little instrumental uh, section of it on my Instagram the other day and I will do that again. And then, you know, tease it a little bit until the 26th. Definitely. And it's, that's right around the corner. It's going to be here before we know it. Yes, it will be. It will be. It, <laughs> life is flying by. <laughs> it really is. So let's talk about your <clears throat> Grammy nomination for your arrangement of How Deep Is Your Love. Bring us back to like the start of this project and how you started working with King's Return. I love this story. I've told it a hundred times and I could tell it a hundred more easily. Um, it was the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I had a newborn baby which made it very hard to do anything. All of my studio gear was in storage. Mm -hmm. I had a little laptop with a little, uh, little MIDI board and a couple speakers and, and, and an interface. And that's all I had. I was at my parents' house because we had just moved up from New York and we, had, we were looking for a place to live. So we were at my parents staying in their guest room, which was really tight. And uh, you know, my life was the baby at that point. She had just been born and I get a random uh, DM on inst uh, Instagram from Gabe Kunda, who sings bass for King's Return, mm -hmm. um, saying, hey, man, love your arrangements. Would you be into doing an arrangement for us for, for you know, I don't even, I didn't know they were making an album. I didn't know what it was for. Yeah. And I honestly was like, oh, my God, I don't, I have a newborn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could make this happen. I was like, yeah, I can. I was like, I'm a little slow. So that's the, that's the disclaimer that I'm giving everybody these days. I'm a little slow, but I would love to. And he gave me the tune, How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. Amazing song. Everybody loves that song. So yeah. um, that made it a little easier. And um, <clears throat> I, I took me about four or five days to get the whole arrangement done. Then me and Gabe and the group went back and forth on, you know, changes and fixes. So after a couple of weeks, it was done. They do this thing where they record it in the stairwell of, I think it's a high school or something. Mm 
mm-hmm. and you know beautiful acoustics and they did that song and Gabe hit me up he was like yo how deep is your love it's kind of viral right now I was like what do you mean it's like it's, he was like we posted it this morning it's got like two million views on Twitter and half a million views on this and I was like wow I've never had a viral video before <laughs> and so they decided to record it for their record and um they put it on their record. I believe their producer submitted it to the Grammys. And, you know, I, I've had things submitted to the Grammys before. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. So the day that they announced it came and went. And uh, it was, well, I didn't, it didn't went. It came. And I was uh, at my parents' house still. Uh, we had just found a place to live, but we weren't moving in yet. Mm-hmm. And I was, uh, my wife was work, away working. So it was just me chasing the baby around who, you know, she was tiny. I guess she was one at this point because it was about a year later Mm -hmm. and running around the house and my phone starts blowing up like Mm -hmm. it's never blown up before. And I kind of ignored it for a little while. And then I went over and checked it. And the first one I read was from Gabe, who just put a bunch of random letters like Mm -hmm. he was freaking out. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? And I looked at another one and it was a friend of mine saying, congratulations. And I looked at another one. It was a friend uh, saying, OMG. So I was like, what is happening? And yeah. then I noticed I had a voice message from Gabe and he was freaking out. Oh, we got nominated. I can't believe it. I, I, the, good, the great thing about it is my dad was there who I got to share that moment with. And I, was, I started tearing up a little bit. I was like, I can't believe I just... And then my, you know, Lila got into something. So I had to run and chase her. Yeah. It was wild. And, and I never met them until the Grammys last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're the sweetest, most amazingly talented human beings on earth. We've done... Man, five, six, seven arrangements, and Gabe is on my next record. That uh, Gabe is on "Keep on the Rise" that I did yeah. with Camila. He's singing right. bass. Uh, it's an acapella song, and uh, yeah, that's the gist. There's little details that I'm probably forgetting, but it's it it came and went so fast. It's such a blur, like you said. Everything is going so fast. It's yeah. that time in my life was wild. People came mm-hmm. out of the woodwork to say, you know, to to. To, to say hello to me again. It was just, it was crazy. It's still like, I'm getting giddy just talking about it again because it's still yeah. crazy that it happened. Yeah. And to have that attached to my name, that's, you know, I, it, it's an it's a incredible validation that my mental brain probably didn't know it needed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's amazing because when I watched the video and I heard the song, it was, first off, I mean, I've seen and watched your videos and listened to your music and your music's on a different level to begin but when you're working with someone else and you're arranging and it's just so beautiful and the way that they sound and it's amazing it was so amazing and i'm so 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 happy that you were able to have that moment because then you think like now you can always say when you walk in a room i'm grammy nominated it's kind of cool it's kind of cool they they Yeah. yeah they 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 sang that like nobody else would have sang it. Their their voices are so gorgeous and so yeah. perfect, and it was a challenge for me because usually when I arrange stuff like that, it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten parts. I'm arranging a song right now for the Aeolians of Oakwood University, which is a bucket list because to me they're one of the best choirs on the planet. Yeah. I mean they've worked with everyone. They're on Jacob Collier's last record, mm-hmm. um, and I get to arrange up to eight parts for them. Yeah. Uh, so I'm having a ball with it. But for four voices, it was it was a challenge, and then it became really fun to say, okay, which four notes mean are the most in this section? Which notes can I take out? So it was really cool, and who knew that only four notes would would get me so far, as opposed to all the other stuff that I put on everything else. Yeah, and you never know what's going to hit and what's going to resonate never. with people. And you no. just kind of. I'm glad that you took that opportunity, right? Because life was stressful for you. We were in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, I could have easily said no. Yeah, Yeah, you could have easily said no. And like you said earlier, I'm choosy about who I work with and the projects I do now. So it's like, I'm so happy that you took that leap and you just did it. And like, definitely, you know, thank God. Yeah, because I and and, and I say I'm choosy. I still try to say yes to as many things as I can, because all in all, it's still music and you're still making music. Uh, But that has opened up a lot of doors for me. I would have never been uh, been arranging for the Aeolians if that didn't happen and some of the other groups I'm working with right now. So it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Thank, thank God I said, yes. I, I, that thought always crosses my brain. What if I said, Hey, I can't right now. I got a newborn and I, I don't have a place to live yet. And whew, 
just thinking about that. Yeah, yes. drives me but insane. You, but I'm happy that you said yes, right? Because I think I mm. think sometimes our minds are like, should I have said yes or no to this? And it could be anything, creative, not oh, yeah. whatever, always. Right? And then you think, oh my God, but what if I said no? And you're like, no, but I said yes. And like, look at where I am now. And yeah. friendships that you're able to make with the guys, right? Yeah, they're the and best. Actually meet them in real life. I think it's wild that you didn't know, you didn't really like, you were never in a room with them before. And then you actually met them at the Grammys, right? Met him at the Grammys, sat together during the, you know, the portion of the show where they did the arrangement category and then right. sat with Gabe for the, for the, the, you know, the big show, the televised show and uh, just got to know those guys. And, and we immediately clicked and became friends and they're just phenomenal dudes. I, I, I was able to get two songs on their last Christmas record. And again, they sang them perfectly and I'll always, though, whatever those guys want from me, I will always be, I will always say yes to them. You yeah. know, and stop whatever I'm doing to, to say yes to them and do whatever they need. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's powerful because you've worked with so many people over the course of your career. And sometimes when it just works and the energy's there and you guys just can work together and it's so beautiful, you're just like, I need more stuff in my life like that. Yeah, it opens your eyes to, you know, prioritizes things in your brain a little bit easier. And I, I'm at, definitely at a point, especially with a daughter, I, I want to be surrounded by good people. That, yeah. And that's it's cheesy in general, but it's it's important because there's a lot of not good people, and you still have to work with them. But it's nice to be able to find guys like King's Return and the Aeolians and everybody else that I've been working with lately. That Jessica Carvo and and Marie Dalstrom on my single last year. Uh, it's amazing to find these phenomenally talented but awesome, awesome people that inspire me. Like they push me. You know, the power of collaboration is something that I've really taken advantage of over the last few years, and it's 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 worked out pretty well. Yeah. And I would definitely want to talk about collaborations because you've collabed with so many people, some big names, Stevie Wonder, Brian McKnight, James Taylor, Christina Aguilera. Talk to me about some of the lessons that you've learned during some of these collaborations. Oh my God. This is everything. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's the world's best, you know, school to be able to work with these people. And, uh, you know, working with Brian McKnight, uh, I, I got, you know, I signed my first deal with him when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And then a few years passed, I ended up touring with him for like seven, eight years. And not only the things musically that you learn from him, but how he prepares for a show and, and you know, what the road was like. Because I never really went on big, long tours like that until I met him. And um, yeah, it, there, there, there's so much that I've learned. I've learned everything from all these people. Um, Megan Hilty, who I've been touring with the last year, she, who's going back to Broadway, mm -hmm. um, which I'm so psyched for. She'll be there in the fall, I believe. Yeah. I am close enough to her where I get to ask her, yeah, well, what do you do when you're just, you have half a voice and you're really nervous because, you know, she tells me all these little tips and, you know, I get to kind of just be a fanboy around her sometimes or, you know, just... You know, I'm the little kid asking, raising my hand to ask her questions. And she's just the best person in the world to answer, to give me the time of day to answer these questions. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I could go into all these little things that I've learned. But it's really all of those people that I've worked with that you just named and way more have yeah. taught me, you know, a million things. I, I played with James Taylor, yes, but I also played with Liv his brother Livingston a lot. And he's just talked mm -hmm. so much about stage performance. He teaches that class at Berkeley. He used to. Mm -hmm. And uh just, you know, I, just being on stage and interacting with the audience and eye contact and all this, the little things that you don't always remember, but you take with you and, and you, you can take out of your pocket at sometimes when you, when you need them. Uh, it's the, that's the best, you know, it's, I'm very lucky to have yeah. all that. Yeah. And the co collaborations that you have and being around good, talented people that inspire you, that's really important. I think sometimes collabs, they might not gel the way they're supposed to, but when you find mm -hmm. the right people and you're like, whoa, I'm so happy we're, we're in this together. We're gonna create yeah. this beautiful project. Yeah, it's there, cause you still, you're always gonna work with people you don't gel with. And, uh, yeah. and it's still, like I said, it's still music and it's still, it, it, it'll turn out to be a song that somebody likes. It'll turn out to be a, you know, a show that somebody loves. And, so yeah, it's, it's, but to be, I've been very blessed and very lucky to, to have these people around me that, that I have, I'm going on tour with, uh, of the, doing the Dave Cos cruise in Europe in a couple of weeks and 
he's another one that's just like, why are you so awesome to me? Just stop, <laughs> stop talking, stop and play. Like you're the best. And he actually freaked out over first me and he's going to play it on his radio show on Sirius XM. Yeah. And like just little things like that. I, I'm very, very lucky and I never take anyone or any day uh, for granted. Mm-hmm. So you've done the cruise how many years now? This is my fourth cruise. Okay. So are you like always yeah. excited when you get that call that he Oh wants- yeah. Like are you yeah. like giddy like Christmas morning giddy when you're like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yes, that- because the people on this cruise are he also just attracts beautiful, lovely people <clears throat> and great, you know, the most talented musicians on the planet. Mm-hmm. are on this thing i played with sheila e last year what like yeah. just like so yeah i i it's definitely like christmas to me to be around all these musicians to have some of the best singers in the world singing background for me and then being able to sing background for them for a show like it's just it is a hodgepodge of just music constant music 24 hours a day and if i'm doing a show by myself Dave Kaz or Ray Parker Jr. or somebody will walk by and, not, and come sit in and play. Like, that's how it is. It's just like this yeah. crazy jam session for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So tell us about this cruise. Like, where exactly is it going? How long is it? This cruise is, uh, this cruise is shorter than the last one. It's only two weeks. Um, mm-hmm. It is going to Malta, Italy, and Greece. And... Uh, you know, and that's the other thing. You get to see the world. You know, I've been to Malta and Italy. I've never been to Greece. So I'm very excited about spending a few days in Athens and going around to all the other spots that we're going to and getting off the boat and doing a little exploring. Um, yeah, it's two weeks. It starts the end of this month. And I'm going out to L.A. to rehearse with them in a couple of weeks, which is also just as fun. You get to be in yeah. a rehearsal stage with all these people just messing around and singing and playing. And it's the best. So are you so on these cruises? On the cruise, are you, I mean, are you performing like hours and hours out of the day or are you just kind of like, or you're still trying to figure that out? So they give you, uh, last year was my busiest year ever, but they give you, hey, today you're going to do a show with Javier Colon from -hmm. The Voice and you're going to sing, you know, acoustic soul songs for an hour. Or today you're going to do a show with Kenny Lattimore and Chris Walker, and you're going to sing R&B love songs to the ladies for an hour kind of thing. (laughs) Uh, They have All-Star Night, which is every artist on the cruise uh, singing. I think this year we're doing songs from the movies. Um, So me and Javier are actually singing Mrs. Robinson, Paul Simon, Garfunkel. Uh, Last year I sang Happy with Eric Eric Darius and uh, John Stoddard, one of my favorite singers and saxophone players that ever lived. So it's just this really wild. They give you they give you things. Um, I don't have any days off this year, which is tough, but I'm playing more piano this year for people than I am have in the past. So it's just it's different. It's always challenging, but it's just it's the best. And it's it's like you asked about learning. You learn something every cruise. You learn something. And the cool thing about this cruise is it's all interactive. So we're constantly talking to fans and people that are on the cruise that want to take a picture with you. It's just, we're having dinner with them. Like, it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think because you're playing so much music and you're with all these musicians, Mm. fans are there and you're just, and then you're traveling on top of it. Like you're on this ship and then they're like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'll get off the ship for a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, kind of deflate for a little while because, because it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but Mm -hmm. it is one of the best experiences I think for the people on the cruise and for the musicians as well that we could ask for. Definitely. So let's talk about any like emerging talents or new artists that you're like really digging. Mm. I forgot to, I forgot to, to research that question when you told me you were going to ask me that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to, first of all, Jessica Carvo. Mm-hmm. She is, she's putting out an album. I believe she emailed me. Uh, she's putting out an EP this Friday, I believe. Amazing. Her, her stuff is incredible. It's just yeah. this indie soulful but beautiful singer song it's just incredible so check out jessica carver she's also in a band called satellite mode that's phenomenal mm-hmm. um i'm working with another guy brandon williams who he's not necessarily an up-and-comer he's also grammy nominated but yeah. he uh we released an album last year he released an album that i was a part of and it has robert glasper and brian mcknight jr and just just a bevy of my favorite artists and 
he is working on, he called me the other day. He's like, I'm working on my next four records. I'm like, well, that's, that's very <laughs> ambitious of you. And he, I'm on one of them already. We did a cover of De- uh, Dionne Warwick's Deja Vu, which mm-hmm. is killing. I can't wait till people hear that. Yeah. And uh, he's working on a Brazilian record, which Brazilian music is one of my favorite types of music in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brandon Williams, production, producer, wizard at every instrument that, that is known to mankind. Check out Brandon. Um, there's so many. There's so many. Uh, 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 my friend Sam Gruen. Check out the Aeolians if you haven't. Okay. It's hard to say they're up and coming when they've been around since the 40s. But... They are a college, like, like uh, one of the members of Take Six's daughter is singing in the choir right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a, they just go YouTube them. They just did, uh, uh, put out a video, Moon River. Yes. It'll put you in tears and it'll make you believe in, you know, whatever. It, it, they, they're just, I, I have no words. That's, they, every time I hear them, I, I lose my control, my ability to speak. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're incredible. Um, and they kind of are always up and coming because they recycle as college. So they recycle students, you know, every, every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Check out the Aeolians. They were on Jacob Collier's last record. Uh, they were on his last two records, I believe. Um, and they've, I, I, when, that, when I got that email to arrange for them, I lost my mind. I was actually doing a show with Sophie B. Hawkins. Yeah. You don't remember, damn, I wish I was your lover. Yep. And oh. I got that, yes, I got that about 10 minutes before we were going on stage and I forgot where I was. I was just like, this, this is too, too good to be true. Cause that's a dream for me to arrange for a choir like that. So I'm having a lot of fun doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll think of some more by the end of the interview, but there's a, there's so many, those I are just on it. top of my head. Cause I'm working with them right now. Yeah. But I think Marie Dalstrom, Marie Dalstrom. Yes. And I think One it's important favorites. to Shout out up and coming. Well, not even up and coming, but just like people you're digging because I feel like we can not all. Under the, under the radar. Yeah. There's like so much great music out there and it's impossible to know everybody, right? It's crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I always like to ask people, like, who, who are you digging? And even if, like, yep. like Justin Timberlake earlier, like, have you heard the new album? Yes. It's great. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Uh, and before I forget, Marie Dalstrom one of the best out there right now. She, she's, uh, she's actually blowing up. She's, yeah. she's going to be out of my league very soon, but we did a song <laughs> together last year called, wow, this is how, this is how baby brain it is. It's called, uh, why, why does it have to feel like that? It's called feel like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, working with her is a dream. Everything she puts out is amazing. She's, she is so, you know, everybody puts out bad songs. She's just one of those people that just has it in her. Everything she writes is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll be doing more in the future too, for sure. Actually, I'm working on a collaboration with her and Brandon Williams. So, oh, cool. Go listen to all my friends, is what I'm trying to say. They're really yes. Talented. Matt has worked with some amazing people and has a lot of stuff cooking. So, talk to me about 2024. What else is coming down the line? Because I, I believe an album is coming, right? I sure hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was supposed to come out a long time ago. That's what they do. They always supposed to come out a long time ago, and then it gets yeah. pushed back a million years because of children and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, 2024, uh, there'll be a single in a couple weeks on the 26th with Jess Carver called Why Don't We Go. Then a couple months after that, there'll be another single. I'm trying to ba- figure out which one's going to be. I have four more songs to record and mm-hmm. the album will be done. They're just about fully produced. Um, once I get off this cruise, my priority is to spend two months finishing all of that um, you know, it's hard because, like I said, yeah, I only get a few hours a day to work, yeah. and I do have a lot of other projects that I'm working on that you know pay the bills and and that I want to, like the Aeolian thing. Uh, but I'm really gonna try to just focus on finishing the record, and hopefully, 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 by the fall, ish. I say mm-hmm. that between the fall and next spring, it'll be out, mm-hmm. thousand percent by next. If it's not by next spring, I quit. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, <laughs> no, I probably don't. Uh, yeah, but it's that, it's, uh, tons of projects coming out. The song with Brandon Williams will be coming out this year at some point. Yeah. I, honestly, there's, I, I work on four different things a day and that's yeah. real. So I, it, there's, there's just going to be a lot. It's going to be a, a, a buffet of different styles and different, you know, Ram arranging this. I'm producing this. Um, I work with my friend Arnold McCuller that I told you about the, uh, sings with James Taylor and all them. He, we released a couple songs last year together and we will be working on 
several things again this year. I really want to cover, um, this is, I'm just putting this out there. The song uh, Luther Vandross and Gregory Hines did back in the eighties. Uh, there's nothing better than love. I don't know. It's a great song. I'm hoping to do that with him and release yeah. it. That I just put out in the air in case he's watching. Uh, yeah. Co- collab collaboration forever. Like tons of collabs and features and stuff like that. That is the worst answer I could have given you. Just That's stuff. Okay. Just stuff. Lots of stuff. <laughs> Lots so, of st- stuff cooking yeah. with Matt. Matt, I think there's like, like you said, you have like all these different projects you're working on. When I was doing my research on you and trying to figure out what was going on with you, I'm like, there are literally 18 different things I could talk about with you project wise. Cause they're just yeah. th- like, you have so many plates spinning. It's yeah. And it's, and I do that to myself and I know that's not good for my mental health as we talked about, but that King's return thing opened my eyes. Say yes to stuff. Yeah. Let them know the real deal. Yeah, I'm going to be a little slower. It might take me an extra couple of weeks. I've been, you know, I've been scoring a lot, scoring a lot of commercials and, and little documentaries and stuff like that, which I, I freaking love doing. I yeah. love seeing something and then putting music to it uh, to enhance it, hopefully. So I've been doing a lot of that. Yeah, it's, there, there's all the plates are spinning, and until they fall off, I'm just going to keep going. And, you know, I don't know. I, I, when you ask me what's happening, I don't know. Stuff. Stuff is the best thing <laughs> so I can stuff. give. So much so stuff. So much we, stuff. We can't even fit it all in because it's just like there's yes. stuff going on. Follow me on Instagram. I'll say everything. I'm playing in Philly Saturday. If you have any people watching from that area, yeah, just stuff. Yeah. Stuff awesome. should be the name of my next record. Yeah, just like lots of stuff, lots of places. Lots of stuff. Just lots of like places. lots of stuff. I like the like, like lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> lots of stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Well, before I let you go, somebody reached out to me by the name of Audrey. She said she was, she's from mm, France. And she my was girl. like, yep. she's like, hey, it, like, can I watch the replay of this? And she reached out to me. I just wanted to shout her out because she can't be live with us, but she will be watching the replay. Good. So Audrey, we say hi to you and thank you so much for your support. Audrey is the best. Another one of those human beings. You just love to be around. You love to chat with, you love to talk to. I love having her around. I love that she listens and has supported me since day one. Amazing. Uh, you know, we've got to, we've got to hang out maybe two, two, three times in our life. She's the best. It's good to have people like that around. Yeah, I think that's so important. Like day ones and people that really stick by you. Like find your people, find those people that bring joy and happiness in your life. And the ones yes. that are a little rocky, just push them off to the side. Been doing that. <laughs> Been doing that. You're one of the good ones too, Ashley. We just, it's ridiculous that this is the only re- the way we talk once a I year, know. you know? I'm going to start randomly hitting you up like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? You can hit me up whenever. I just feel like there's so much going on with you. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful yeah. that we have been able to have these conversations live in the moment like this is unfiltered like there's no we're, there's no editing like this is just me and matches vibing on the spot just hanging out yep yeah i wish i had a glass of wine right now but i don't i have a big <laughs> I gallon of water come back in again. i feel like she's gonna make another appearance no my wife just texted me she she finally fell asleep and she oh, said she's she really cute you have to come see our snuggle bug after you're done <laughs> oh, oh my god it's so cute yeah. well matt that's all the questions that i have but do you have any final words for the room Nah, just keep keep I don't know, man. Megan Hilty always says at the end of her shows, I'm going to just close this out so corny because she says it so much better. But just be kind because it costs nothing to be kind to people. And, and I, that's all I'm trying to do. And musically, just follow me. And, and I appreciate every listen. Even if you hate the songs, I appreciate the listen because that's point oh 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 one cent in my pocket. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I just, just let's, let's support each other. And like, especially you, like, thank you, because, you know, even if one person or 10,000 people are watching this, it's, it's something, it's someone and people like you keep us that, you know, have, have uh, these struggles sometimes you keep us going. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm so very grateful for your time this evening and the other two times you're on my show. And I love what you're doing. I'm always so excited to chat with you. And thank you so much for your vulnerability. I think it's really important to have these conversations out in the open. And I hope um, it helps a lot of people. And I hope it helped helped you as well. It does. Talking with you always helps me. Yes. Like I said, I know you didn't expect this to be a therapy session, but a lot of my conversations have been going that way lately. (laughs) That's just where I'm at. my last couple of interviews have been about mental health and I am all about it because if someone wants to talk about it, like let's go there. Let's yeah. have a conversation. Right. All us creative people have 
different our, yeah our heads are screwed on a little little loose so i think it's okay to i think the talking helps cuz my in my 20s i never did and that's why i ended up in a that's why i ended up really really sick so yeah. it's nice to to be able to openly talk about it and and not feel ashamed of talking about it it's pretty great yeah, yeah. be kind talk it out guys be a good friend meditate matt we're going to talk about meditating <laughs> please help me with the meditation I'm that's what i'm going to hit you I'm, hit you up about I am emailing you after this with all the stuff. Okay? Please, please. I <laughs> welcome it. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for joining me once again on my show. Guys, if you don't already, this is Ashley Live. I'm vibing with Ashley Live. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit like. Please follow Matt. Spotify, YouTube, Instagram. Where else can they find you? Facebook, Twitter. I think you're like- All the things. Yeah, I'm, I suck at TikTok, but I'm on there. <laughs> I'm trying to, I, I just, it's just one extra thing. I'm like, oh, I got to do it on this one too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, follow me. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely chat with you. I'll definitely do all that, you know, but I, I yeah, like all the other stuff. So yeah, I'm on. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for spending your evening. I'm so very grateful for you coming back on my show. This has been so much fun and I, I appreciate it. You got to come back on again soon. Okay. I can't wait for the fourth. Anytime you want me, I'm here. <laughs> of course. Guys, have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks, Ashley. Bye. Bye.